Hi, this is Miss Cornwell. Thank you for joining me for our last lesson for this week. I'm proud of the hard work that you've been doing at home and so glad you've joined for this last lesson. Before we get started today, you'll need some materials. They're the same ones as the last couple lessons. First, you'll need this week's learning packet. Remember, if you don't have the learning packet, that's okay. You can use a piece of scratch paper or a journal or even your student response book if you happen to have that at home. Next, you'll need a pen or pencil to record your thinking. And last, a turn and talk partner. Remember, if you don't have someone at home watching this video with you, you can just, you can talk to a stuffed animal or a pet, or just think about your answers in your head. Remember also, if the person watching the video with you speaks to you in a language other than English, you can have your discussions in that language. Take a few moments to gather these materials, and then we'll get started with our lesson. All right, over the past couple of lessons, we have been reading passages from this book, Lifetimes, by David L. Rice, illustrated by Michael S. Maydak, and published by Dawn Publishers. We have read about army ants, about elephants, and about saguaro cactuses, and we've talked about the important ideas in those sections. Before we read a new section for today, let's take a moment to review what we've already read. What is something important that you learned about army ants? What about something important that you learned about elephants? Last, what is something important that you learned about saguaro cactuses? Remember, determining or talking about important ideas is a good reading comprehension strategy that readers use to help them understand and remember what they've read. We'll do that today as we read a new passage from the book Lifetimes. And we'll think about what's important to understand and remember. Today, the topic that we're going to read about, remember that this book is a nonfiction book, so it tells us true information about the lifetimes of all of these different plants and animals. Today, we will learn about hermit crabs. Here's a picture. To get ourselves ready to read, please take a second to think. What do you think you know about hermit crabs? My students have told me in the past that they have seen hermit crabs before used as pets. Other students have said, I know that they live inside of shells. As we read the first time, please think about what are you learning about hermit crabs? Then we'll have a chance to read it again a second time and we'll think about what is important to understand and remember. So, a lifetime for a hermit crab is about five years. Hermit crabs are very good at taking action to make their lives better. Nature doesn't give them a shell for protection, so they find shells that are empty and recycle them. They use these shells like motorhomes, and motorhomes, or sometimes you hear them called, it, called RVs, are vehicles that you can live in and drive around. Motorhomes, until the crabs get too big for them. Then they move into larger shells. Another neat trick of the hermit crab is to put a sea anemone on top of its shell. And a sea anemone is a sea creature with poisonous tentacles. You can see in the illustration here that the hermit crab actually has a sea anemone on top of its shell. Another neat trick of the hermit crab is to put a sea anemone on top of its shell. The poisonous arms of the anemone keep an octopus or squid from eating the crab for dinner. Since sea anemones can't move around very well by themselves, piggybacking on the crab is a special treat that allows them to find food as the crab moves along. 
what is something interesting or what are some interesting things that you've learned about hermit crabs from this passage? Think. And then turn and talk. One interesting thing that I learned that I didn't know before was that hermit crabs put a sea anemone on top of their shell to keep octopus and octopus or squid from eating them. Now we'll read this passage a second time. This time, please pay attention to what you think is most important to understand and remember from this part. You can follow along on the screen up here with me, or you can also find this printed in your learning packet or on page 67 of your student response book. A lifetime for a hermit crab is about five years. Hermit crabs are very good at taking action to make their lives better. Nature doesn't give them a shell for protection, so they find shells that are empty and recycle them. They use these shells like motor homes until the crabs get too big for them. Then they move into larger shells. Another neat trick of the hermit crab is to put a sea anemone on top of its shell. The poisonous arms of the anemone keep an octopus or squid from eating the crab for dinner. Since anemones can't move around very well by themselves, piggybacking on the crab is a special treat that allows them to find food as the crab moves along. Now that you've had a chance to read this a second time. We're going to do the strategy we learned in the last lesson, which is think, pair, write. So first, please think. What do you think is most important to understand and remember about hermit crabs from this passage? Before I tell you to turn and talk, I'd like to remind you to explain your reasoning using evidence from the text with the sentence stem, the reason I think this is. Mm. Turn and talk. Now that you've had a chance to think and to turn and talk, I invite you to please write about what you think an important idea or two are in this passage. As a reminder, here's my example that I wrote about saguaro cactuses. I wrote, I think an important thing to remember is that saguaro cactuses conserve or save their resources. The reason I think this is, they are able to survive in the dry desert by storing lots of water whenever it rains. Now it's your turn to write. Please remember to use complete sentences and to explain your reasoning using the sentence stem, the reason I think this is. I'm going to do my own writing now too, so I'm going to be quiet for a couple of minutes while I write. I'll put this back up so you can see it. You should be writing too. I forgot to say that. Make sure you're writing down your thoughts in your learning packet or student response book or scratch paper.
Okay, I have finished my writing. If you haven't finished your writing yet, that's just fine. If you can pause the video, please do that now and continue your writing. If you can't pause the video, you can finish up after the video is over. Here's what I thought. I think an important thing to remember about hermit crabs is that they take action to protect themselves. The clue that I found, one of the clues that I found that this was an important idea is that often we can find the important idea by looking at the first or the last sentence of a paragraph. But here are some other reasons I thought it was important. The reason I think this is important is that the rest of the passage gives examples of the actions they take. One example is that they protect themselves by finding empty shells. They also put poisonous sea anemones on their backs. Now that's what I wrote about. But when I've had this discussion with my class, students have, some students have told me, actually, Ms. Cornwell, I disagree with you because I think an important idea of this passage is that sea anemones cooperate with other creatures to make both of them better, their lives better. The reason I think this is that the hermit crabs put the sea anemones on their back and the sea anemones protect the hermit crabs, but the hermit crabs also help the sea anemones by helping them to move around. Now, is that a bad thing that one of my, that some of my students and I have different ideas about what are important ideas in this passage? No, that's not a bad thing. It makes our discussions a lot more interesting as long as we disagree in a respectful way and we give reasons for our thinking. One other way that I think is kind of fun to think about the important idea in a passage is to think about what could, what do we think people could learn from this? For example, what do you think that people can learn from the lives of hermit crabs? What do you think? One idea that I thought of is that we can learn from hermit crabs that when we cooperate, we can make things better for all of us, just like the hermit crab and the sea anemone cooperated. I'm sure you can find some other ideas that we can learn from hermit crabs, elephants, army ants, and saguaro cactuses. Thank you for joining me for these lessons. Over the past two weeks, we've read a variety of different nonfiction or true texts, and we've thought about the important ideas or the information and ideas that are most important to understand and remember. This is my last lesson with you, but you'll continue to think about important ideas with other teachers over the next several weeks. Before I say goodbye, I want to remind you that first, at the, at the end of this video, if you haven't finished your writing, you should do that. Second, make sure you do IDR by reading a Just Write book for 25 to 30 minutes today. Ideally, if you have a nonfiction book, that would be great because that's what we've been practicing with. And I'd like you to please use your reading comprehension strategies, but especially focus on determining important ideas, thinking about what are you learning and what's most important to understand and remember. Then, after you read, if you can share your reading, the title, the author, what it's about, and an important idea with someone at home, that will help you to build your reading comprehension. Now, I don't know about you, but I often get my books to read from the public library. And because the libraries have been closed recently, I'm kind of running out of books to read. If you're finding yourself in that same situation as me, I want to remind you that there are lots of resources on the Seattle Public Schools website that can help you to find some texts. And these are especially good, I think, for nonfiction. So I'd like to show you now how you can access those resources. You will start by going to the Seattle Public Schools website, which is seattleschools.org. I find that the easiest way to find the student resources is from here by going to the students drop-down menu. Then 
I click on online academic resources. I want to make sure I have the elementary tab selected, not middle and high school for now. And here you can see lots of resources, uh, but today I'd like to point out just two that you might want to use. The first one is Britannica. Britannica is an online encyclopedia that includes lots of nonfiction information. If I click on Britannica, I can choose um, a level. So I would start with elementary. Here, there are some collections that I could click on. So if I'm interested in learning about animals, this is kind of a shortcut. If I click on Animal Kingdom, then it will take me to lots of different things about animals. Hmm, maybe I want to learn more about sea animals after reading about hermit crabs. I can also type a search query in the search bar at the top. Let's say that I want to learn more about hermit crabs. I can type that in and then I can start, click the my magnifying glass or press enter to search. Here, I don't see an, an article just about hermit crabs, but if I click on crab animal, I am taken to an article that has lots of different sections with text and even some photos and videos about hermit crabs. Another resource that you can use to find nonfiction information is Pebble Go. If I click on Pebble Go, it will take me to the main Pebble Go website. This also has some collections that I can click on. If I'm interested in learning more about animals, I can click that. But we also right now have access to um, Pebble Go Next, which is a resource that's specifically for third through fifth grade students. So it might have more information in it. If I click at this purple capstone at the top and then click on Pebble Go Next, I'll probably need to log in. You see this arrow that says log in above. I click on login, student, SPS, and the password is access right here, A-C-C-E-S-S. -S. You may need this login information for Britannica also if you're logging in for the first time. So I'm going to click go. And this will take me to another site where I can search or where I can look at some collections. I hope that's helpful to help you find some texts for IDR time today. Thank you again so much for joining me for these lessons. I miss my students. I know your teachers miss you. We're very proud of the work that you've been doing and we want to encourage you to keep learning and to keep reading. Take care. Thanks again. Goodbye.